That's it. Okay, give me my screwdriver. Bring me my screwdriver. Bring it here. Come on. Good job. So this came in just a box of other stuff I bought from an estate auction. Really have no interest in it. But I thought, you know what? Instead of throwing it away, let's take it apart. Upgrade it to lithium. Do something with it. Uh, these hang, hung on the wall. There's just two little contacts. Charged it. This just forced juice into the uh, NICAD cells into there constantly. Never worked worth a darn. Batteries were always dead. Mainly because it just boiled the batteries out because it was just always charged. I, this has been sitting at least 10-15 years in the box of stuff that I got it with. But I threw it on the charger for a day and that's about all we get. I mean, there's no life there. But we're taking it apart. Looks like there's some roll pins to punch out and start looking at the battery system and upgrade it. So we'll take a roll pin punch and punch those out. And then we got one screw, so we will do cannibalism and use a modern screwdriver to take it out. Boom. The pop front just pop off. Yes, it does. We got our planetary gears. And then what do we have inside? Which way does it want to open? I think it actually wants to open this way. Our switch. So we have three cells in here. And these are called four-fifths sub-C. So they're, they're like a C-sized battery. And then they have what's called a sub-C, which is a little bit smaller than a C. And these are four-fifths the size of a sub-C. Eh, not that it matters. Looks like there's some, actually some quick-release terminals. So you could replace this battery pack. I'm sure somebody out there sells it. Yep, so this one's our positive. This one's our negative. Each one of these is rated for 1.2 volts. Um, nominal, average. So... Probably almost 1.5 volts full, closer to 1.4, and then 1 volt empty, so 1.2 volts is average. So 3.6 volts, fully charged, you're looking at um, almost 4.5 volts, and empty, you're looking at 3 volts, which just happens to be the exact same parameters as a lithium-ion cell. So we will put one of those in its place. It looks like I can just pull off both connectors. That's it. I mean, if you were replacing these, that's actually pretty dang easy. Um, but circuitry, looks like the charging circuitry is pretty freaking basic. I don't know if the red light goes out uh, when it is charged, because the red light just stayed on constantly when I plugged it in. Um, we just have a little teeny, what is this, a Johnson's control, a uh, Johnson's motor. And it looks like, I was looking at this for a second. You actually, when you switch left to right, you're actually just moving. The motor's not actually staked on to anything. Is that just a D-shaft? Yeah, that's just a D-shaft on there. The pins, the gear's not even held on. It looks like the motor, it, nothing's even soldered onto it. It's just sitting there and moving these, the switch back and forth just changes whether or not positive touches here and here or there and there. Just That's it. Pretty neat, pretty basic. So let's grab a uh, lithium ion cell and see if that'll actually fit in there, like an 18650. So this right here has about 2600 milliamps. How much power has in it? I bet you these are only around 800, 900. So, I mean, this is two to three times greater power density in lithium versus that. That's why, that's why it's king right now. Doesn't look like it's going to be a direct fit in there. It looks like I got that screw to terminal in the way, but I might just grind that off. And you know what? I'm gonna. I'm just gonna grind that off, so we can fit one in here. I think I should be able to fit two. Yeah, I should be able to fit two in there. I might have to grind off some of these tabs a little bit, these locating tabs. Uh, but we'll still have them at the back, and we may just have to, once we get it back together, glue it back together. But pretty straightforward. Positive and a negative. These are the two cells I ended up choosing out of my bunch that I have. Um, now these cells are wired in parallel. So positive to positive, negative to negative. Where these are wired in series, goes through, and then you add up the voltage. Where these ones are just side to side, 
all it does is increase capacity, double capacity. Each one of these is 2,500 milliamps, so that's you add that up to 5,000 milliamps of capacity versus the uh, the 900 or so you get here. So five, six times better capacity out of these two. Now, how do you connect them? You do not need a a spot welder. The reason stuff is spot welded from the factory, the number one reason is production. It's efficient and it's fast. Yes, you will damage your cells if you just sit there and dump a ton of heat into them. But if you're smart about it, get in, get out, then you'll have no problems whatsoever. I've sanded the surfaces. This is just flux. Even if you're using a rosin core solder, use a flux. It just makes stuff so much nicer. I'll pre-tin it. My solder and I might have cooled down. There you go. My solder and I are cooled down. Now it's back up to temp. It should only take a second or so. That's a lot of solder on that. Just heating up the surface. If you sand it good with flux, it just should flow right out. I'll pre tin even my strip that I'm going to attach to it. There we go. There we go. Let's take my strip. It's nice and warm. Let's set it on there. It looks like I'm putting a ton of heat into it, but I'm not. You won't even feel the battery being warm when you're done. There it goes. I saw it ooze out the side. Done. Cools back down instantly. That's it. These batteries will get warmer in use than they will doing this. You can pull these batteries out in use and they're way hotter. Now I'll bond a, one of the original strips to this. So again, sand it. Scuff, I mean, that's not even, it's not even warm, it's lukewarm. There's no heat there, so. Come on. Flow around, that's it. Good enough. That's on there. We can bend it to where we want now. So my circuitry, got my positive, my negative. This is my negative side. You can see the positive. It looks like the negative connects directly to this terminal. And this is a side terminal, other charging terminal. But it looks like it comes down across and it goes through this diode. So I'm going to just jumper this and then it looks like the um, resistor is just to power the LED. So I'm going to jumper this and that'll eliminate the diode and then the LED may still work with the charger. I'm going to use a different charger, you'll see in a second, but we're going to try that at first. Just a big old glob of solder right there. So you cannot use your original charger. You cannot charge lithium with a NICAD charger. You just can't. You'll fry the batteries. They're super, that's the problem with lithium, they're super delicate. So this is just some cheapo universal charger, charges lithium, everything else that I bought years ago for a couple dollars, if that. Is I actually disconnected all the components on there, the little LED, um, the resistor, everything's disconnected now. So these two terminals on the outside of the, which are on the outside of the case, just touch the positive and negative. That's all they do, straight to positive and negative. So now, if I touch this to this and this, make sure we're not arcing stuff, to this, the battery's hooked up. Now, if this goes into the charger, and we'll get to the charger in a second, um, you should see that it starts charging the batteries exactly like exactly what I want. So that's it. I've just emitted the LED and stuff like that. I don't want it to be a parasitic draw on stuff so now it's just a matter of starting to put this back together and then we'll worry about the charger separately it's like playing Jenga okay 
Okay, this is the glue I'm choosing. Shugu. It's made by a company, the same company that makes um, E6000. There's a couple other versions of it, and it's all the same stuff. I just usually buy whatever's cheapest. That will set up. It's like a... It sets up to, like, the. it's made for repairing, like, skater shoes. So, the bottom of your shoe sets up to that hard rubber. But if you really wanted to, I could cut this open in the future. Get this. Electrical tape makes an awesome clamp because it's elastic, especially if you buy good 3M stuff. The gears look pristine. This thing looks like it was never ever used, which is probably pretty realistic. This doesn't really matter. There we go. Heck yeah. Put some roll pins back in. Okay, the charger. That's a start. So this is the power supply for the charger. Um, we don't need that anymore. We cannot use that. So we're going to use this. And what am I going to do with this? I figured I'm just going to open this up and solder the two connections to the, whatever touches this and this. And then they'll just touch there and there. Super basic. This will just be plugged into the wall now. Um, and it could still actually charge your 18650s or 9 volts. I thought about taking the guts out, the chip out, and putting it in here. But I don't really care what's plugged in the wall. You won't see it. So... I'm going to open this up and just solder these two wires, positive, positive, negative, negative. Super basic, super simple. Wire, wire, simple as that. Screw back together. It's ready to go. Okay, did we bring it into the 21st century? Look at that. Green light. red light yep it's charging well I guess we got to test it now so charger works let's um, throw in a screw this is a two and a half inch That's some good force. There we go. That's pretty impressive. It works. Yep, everything works. Let the glue dry up. Take off the electrical tape. We're done. Hello? This is him? Oh, hey, 1990. What are you looking for? Your, your screwdriver? No. You didn't give it to me. No, I have that Makita that I always use. I wouldn't. I don't know what I would do with a Black & Decker. No, maybe you gave it to... Maybe Bob. Over doing it cheap has it. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I, if I see him, I'll, I'll ask him. But no, you didn't give it to me. Your VHS tapes? Yeah, I still got them. No, I, I watched Mad Max Beyond the Thunderdome. Uh, that's a good one. I like all the Mad Maxes. Those are really good. So yeah, I'll bring that back to you. But no, I haven't seen your screwdriver. Okay, take care. Darky soon, bye. Okay, first attempt. Let's try this. This is unscripted. You've never done this before. You see this? This is a screwdriver. Okay, see it? It's right there. Hold on. Can you bring me the screwdriver? Can you bring it to me? Can I have it? Can you bring me the screwdriver? Come on. Go ahead. Get it. Come on. Good enough. Thanks for watching, guys. People can't see it down there. Did they even see you grab it? Kind of. Let's try again. 
see this? The screwdriver, okay? I'm gonna leave it right there, you see it? Hold on, hold on. See it? Okay, give me my screwdriver. Bring me my screwdriver. Bring it here, come on. Good job. Good job. Now can you get me a 9 16 